It's a cappella and a word time. A cappella and a word. Listen in. You will definitely be blessed. I would like to tell you what I think of Jesus. Since I found in him a friend so strong and true. I would tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something no other friend can do. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Welcome to another episode of A Cappella and A Word. Just like you heard in the, in the song I just sang, he says, um, I would like to tell you what I think of Jesus. There's something very personal sounding there. It has to be, like we say, a personal putna impu experience with him. That's why John the Apostle, in, in his first epistle, 1 John 1, in reading down, and I'm paraphrasing, he says, concerning that that has been always there from the beginning. The beginning, don't forget, is a point of reference. We None of us can really say exactly when the beginning was. It's, it's, it's a faith to be received in faith kind of uh, a point of reference. That which has always been there from the beginning with the Father, Jesus Christ. We, the word of life, we, he became flesh. He appeared in the flesh. We encountered him. We touched him. We ate with him. We walked with him. And he with us. In short, we experienced him personally. And, and, and he had every good reason to be able to say that. He walked with him intimately for a period of three years, day in, day out, you know, engaged in itinerant ministry as he taught them and, and, and discipled them to also become um, um, carriers of his message to the world a message about life that he himself is. Jesus is to be experienced. So in 1 John 1, 1 reading down, he says that which we have experienced, that which we have handled regarding the word of life, who has always been there, who has no beginning, who has no end, but is the beginning and the end, amazingly. He's the one we are sharing with you. Because we have fellowshiped with him. He is for real. And so we are sharing him with you. So that you can have fellowship with him as we have had. That's the message there. Beautifully, simply stated. And that's why I'm here today. He's, he's somebody to be encountered. I don't know if you have a problem with the sonship and the godship of Jesus Christ. Um... That's not the argument I am here to engage in. Um, the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. We live by faith every day, each one of us, in a sense. I mean, as you are walking, um, stepping, each step you take, not sure that the next you know, ground ahead of you would open up and swallow you up. You just step along, you, each step, you step forward. It's an act of faith you, because we do it automatically moment after moment we don't really give much thought to it you you rush or you, you you signal to a taxi to stop 
you you order uh, the Uber to come pick you. You know, you don't know who it's it's you don't know who the driver is. You, you it's a step of faith, you know. We take it every day, you know. And you, you sit in that on that bus in that trotro. You don't know where the driver is from. If you're sitting far at the back, he prob probably may be blowing a little fuse from some uh, tot of alcohol he's taken that could <laughs> uh, uh, kind of uh, disturb his his focus and sense of direction. But but you you commit to to such every day. How much more the one who seemingly audaciously says, I am the way, not one of the ways, the truth, not one of the truths, the life, not one of many lives. That's audacious. And he's inviting you and he says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will, emphatic, give you rest. So I'm, today I'm, I'm daring you, maybe someday we'll talk about your challenges with who you think Jesus is. But I'm here to tell you about the Jesus who is a very personal God. The Jesus who came to take your place and mine on the cross. That his shed blood would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Adam and Eve, we all got kind of crushed in the manufacturing line. And God says, well, it's my business now. I, I, got, into, I got it into my head to create you. And you've gone and listened to the wrong voice of the enemy and, and walked away from me. But I'm coming after you. I'm pursuing you in a spirit of love to take you away from my judgment that I have passed. Because the Bible says, um, you know, sin, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ when you receive him as Lord. And so sometimes when you read that famous verse, some people make a mockery of, and for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish there is a perishing that has been decreed if there are conditionalities to meet it says so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but hath everlasting life so weigh the words carefully it's a god who comes after you in love and says my justice, my holy justice, demands that a price be paid for the sin of disobedience, of wanting to walk your own way. And if you respond to that price that I chose to pay, and I only I could pay in the person of my son, Jesus, then that perishing is set aside eternally and you have eternal life i'm inviting you today to ask him to come be real to you um, you may have questions we all do they would be answered in time the apostle paul says from each moment to moment, we, we grow in knowledge. We, I am content with the knowledge I have at this moment. Now we see through a film darkly, but there's coming a time when we'll see, we will see clearly. So with what you have heard today, the little you have imbibed today, I'm, I'm asking you, would you like to invite Jesus into your life? If you would like to invite Jesus into your life, you could say this prayer along with me. Lord Jesus, I haven't figured everything 
there is to figure out about about you. But if you are for real, please come into my space and show me. I'm not daring you. I am sincerely looking for you to come be real to me. Your claim that you are the way, the truth, and the life. I would like to experience it personally. So I'm inviting you today. Come help me make some sense and meaning of this thing called life. I acknowledge your lordship. I dare to acknowledge your godship. Because you did say that I and the Father are one. And I acknowledge that you died on the cross so that your shed blood would cleanse me from all unrighteousness. But above all, I acknowledge that you are alive. And I want to experience that aliveness for myself so that I can dare to share you with others also. Thank you for hearing me. Amen. If you said that prayer with me, I, I have no doubt if you did so in all sincerity of, of spirit or of heart, that you will encounter him in a way that hitherto you have never done so please um, do remember to maybe share your experience sometime that when I said that prayer something happened in my life my life began to take a more meaningful course all right so I like I always like to do I would like to just say a prayer if you don't mind if you just kind of with your right hand connect with this hand let's pray if anybody has a, a condition that only the Lord can take away because medicine has tried all it, is, it isn't working pray with me father as this brother and sister Join faith with me. I rebuke every disease. And I say, disease be gone in Jesus' name. And let the wellness and the wholeness of the healing that comes in the name of Jesus be my brothers, be my sisters. Amen. All right. So until we connect again uh, on another episode of A Capella and a Word, it's bye for now.